हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू डेली प्रॉब्लम्स प्रैक्टिस एंड इनिशिएटिव ऑफ राउस आई एस वेर वी टेक अप इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज बेस्ड फ्रॉम द आर्टिकल्स व्हिच आर पब्लिश्ड इन द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एंड द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस टॉपिक्स टेकन फॉर टुडेज एमसीक्यूज आर डिस्प्लेड ऑन योर स्क्रीन सो लेट अस बिगिन द डिस्कशन दिस आर्टिकल ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर अपीयर्ड ऑन पेज फर्स्ट वेयर इट टॉक्स अबाउट दैट रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैज केप्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉलिसी रेट एट देयर प्रीवियस पोजीशन और दे हैव केप्ट द रेपो रेट अनचेंज्ड now from this article the repo rate or the policy rate becomes very important on which we have framed today's question as you can see on the screen in 2023 that is this year's prelim examination there was a statement based question with respect to the central banks and on the same line we have framed a question here the question is with respect to the repo transactions so please do not get confused between repo rate and repo transactions so repo rate is that rate on which these transactions takes place so the statement first says repo transactions can be used to meet temporarily liquidity requirements in short term money mismatch now this statement is correct because repo transactions between central bank and the commercial banks take place for the short term money mismatch the second statement says that repo is a money market instrument working through sale and purchase of options in debt instruments and debt instruments here include government securities now as repo is a short term measure it is part of money market so on that requirement this second statement is also correct but if we come to this conclusion any option between a and b could be correct but if we know that statement 2 is a correct explanation of statement 1 then option a will be correct if no then option b will be correct now repo or repurchase options is a money market instrument under which rbi provide money to the banks or commercial banks and this money is being given against the securities or the debt instruments these securities are promised to be taken back by these banks and when they will take back their securities they have to return back the money to the rbi along with the repo rate attached to the money or the sum that they have borrowed so based on this discussion the answer to this question is option a the answer to the upsc's question for 2023 is going to be option a where both the statements are correct and explanation given is also correct to know more about such kind of questions and their answers in the 2023 prelim examination you can follow the website of compass at rouse is to know more this article of the hindu newspaper appeared in text and context section and talks about what are the cyclonic effect on the monsoon which onsets in india now monsoon onset comes in the month of june from the state of kerala because this is from where southwesterly winds enter indian subcontinent now based on this understanding let us go through the question In 2020 a similar weather or climatic based question was asked where cyclone jet streams and other concepts were asked Today the question is based on three different understanding the first one is monsoonal trough is a low pressure large area usually develop in a deccan region of india now this statement is incorrect let us see how monsoonal trough is a low pressure area and low pressure is inversely related to the high temperature now in the months of may june and july the temperature in northern part of india is very high hence there will be low pressure and this low pressure will be called as monsoonal trough as you can see this large or elongated dotted line showcases the monsoonal trough hence it is in the northern plains and not in the deccan region so from that understanding the first statement is incorrect The second statement says that movement of tropical cyclones developed in the Arabian Sea. So this is your Arabian Sea. If any cyclone is developed over here, cyclone anti-clockwise. So if a cyclone is developed in Arabian Sea and that cyclone move towards the Indian subcontinent would strengthen the monsoon from summer. Now if this cyclone is moving along with a southwest winds and enters the indian subcontinent it is easy to understand that of course 
as this tropical cyclone is bringing high moisture it is going to strengthen the summer monsoon so from that understanding the second statement would be correct the third statement says that movement of southwesterly winds towards the northeastern direction over the southern bay of bengal now please go through the map again now the statement is saying south westerly winds which are moving in the north eastern direction from the southern part of bay of bengal that is this particular region now when these winds are moving in this direction and not parallel to the indian coast it is easy to understand that these winds are going to weaken the indian monsoon because they are not even entering the indian subcontinent if these winds are going along with the coast they are most likely to enter the indian subcontinent the first region which is going to receive the rainfall would be in the northeast india so from that understanding it is easy that this statement given is correct so from the conclusion we come to the point that the answer to this question is only two that is statement 2 and statement 3 are correct the answer to the upsc's question in this case is going to be the option c that is only statement 2 is correct this article of the hindu newspaper was also published in the text in context section and talks about the requirements for the limits of upi or unified payment interface transactions in india now upi as we all know functions through the facilitation of national payment corporation of india upi or unified payment interface as we better know paytm phone pay or even google pay are the mediators that provide these kind of services even bhim upi is also there so we have framed a question based on the transactions in upi in 2017 upi itself was asked by upsc in the prelim examination so the question says with reference to the transaction on the unified payment interface consider the following statement the first one is all upi transactions are subjected to maximum and minimum limit this statement is partially correct and partially incorrect all transactions are subjected to maximum limit but not minimum limit so you can send one paisa also so there is no limit minimum limit as far as upi transaction is concerned but maximum limit is 1 lakh 2 lakh and 5 lakh on different categories hence this statement is incorrect the second one is initial public offering which is the stock market investment and the retail direct scheme is not allowed under the upi this statement is incorrect up to rupees 5 lakh can be invested using the upi in these two programs the third statement says that each bank can set limit of daily transactions on upi this statement is absolutely correct be it the sbi be it the bank of baroda be it the icici bank they can set their limit about the transaction a person can take place with respect to upi so based on the discussion the answer to this question is going to be option a and the answer for unified payment interface from upsc was that mobile wallets will not be necessary for the online payment that is option a This article of the Hindu newspaper appeared in the editorial page and talks about a famous central government scheme of production link incentive on which we have framed a question. Similarly in 2017 industry based question was asked with regards to the quality council of India. Today the question says that consider the following statement related to the production linked incentive scheme. Statement 1 It is an outcome based scheme where incentives are based on incremental production please understand this this term is very very important incremental production means today let's say if it is 9th of june the production was 100 unit on 10th of june the production was 110 unit on 11th of june the production was 120 unit if this is a particular trend of a particular company or a particular industry then yes production linked incentive or benefits will be given to that particular industry so the first statement is correct in some sector however incentives will be calculate on the basis of sales now some of the sectors like cell batteries textile products and drone industries such kind of sectors go with this basis of sales so incentives under this scheme will be provided only if the sales are increasing because of the single clause that stocks may not be sold 
assume that a company has produced x amount of goods or say 100 units of clothes and out of this 100 units only 50 units were sold now the rest 50 units are acting as stocks or they are lying idle in the shop or in the industry or in the factory so why should government pay for the stocks unsold products and that is the reason why some of the products are sold on the basis of their sales and the second statement is correct but there is no connection between two statement because of which option b is going to be the answer for this question the answer to upsc's question on quality council of india was option c that is both the statement given are correct now we come to the questions from indian express the first question is with respect to the recently discovered 13th century tomb like structure near siri fort and siri fort is in delhi with respect to the archaeological sites, which is one of the favorite topic for UPSC, we have framed a question. In 2015, an historical event-based question from the personality of Babar, that is Mughal was asked, it is from medieval India. On the similar lines, we have created a question from Sultanat. As this structure belongs to the 13th century, it is more relevant from the perspective of Sultanat. So these are the five important structures and the question says which of the above given monuments were built during the reign of Khilji dynasty. Now the reign of Khilji dynasty was between 1290 to 1320 AD. Now first is Khuni Darwaza. This is wrong statement because Khuni Darwaza was built by Sher Shah Suri and it is one of the 13 surviving gates in Delhi. The second is Alai Darwaza. This is correct. It was built by Alauddin Khilji and this is part of the Kutub complex. The third is Siri Fort. Siri Fort was also built during the reign of Alauddin Khilji and was one of the important forts which were built to defend the city from the onslaught of Mongols. The fourth one is jamaat e khana Mosque. This statement is also correct. However, it was not built by Sultan Alauddin Khilji. It was built by Khijr Khan who is the successor or the son of Alauddin Khilji. jamaat e khana Mosque is part of the Nizamuddin Aulia Darga complex. The last one is Bibi Ka Makbara. This is incorrect. Bibi Ka Makbara was built by Aurangzeb and it was dedicated to his wife Dilras Banu Begum. It is situated in the city of Aurangabad in Maharashtra. Now please comment in the comment box what is the new name of the city of Aurangabad. So based on this discussion the correct answer is going to be only 3 that is 2, 3 and 4. The answer to the UPSC's question was option B that is only 3. This article of the Indian Express was published on page 10 and talks about an important agricultural credit society known as PECS or Primary Agriculture Society on which we have framed a question today. In 2013, a direct question was asked with respect to the credit assistance to the ruler household in which RRBs, NABAD and land banks were asked. Today, the question is primarily based on the PECS. So the first statement is primary agricultural credit societies provides short term to long term credit line to its members. Now this statement is incorrect for one reason. It is not long term. They can only provide short term to medium term of loan, not a loan for 10 years. Hence the statement is incorrect. The second is refinancing of PACs is met by regional rural banks and the scheduled commercial bank. This statement is also incorrect because the refinancing of these societies is done by NABAD or National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development. The third statement says that National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development mandates one PAC at each Gram Panchayat. See, NABAD is responsible for refinancing. That's how it is correct. However, it cannot mandate one primary agricultural credit society at each Gram Panchayat because there are over 1 lakh Gram Panchayat in India which does not have any form of primary agricultural credit society. So from that perspective, this statement is also incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is going to be option D that none of the above are correct. The answer to UPSC's question is option C that is 1 and 3. NABAD does not provide direct credit assistance to the ruler household. It is a refinancing agency. Now before moving to the next question, here is the basic classification of cooperative credit institutions in India. 
Over this, we have agricultural credit institution and non-agricultural credit institution. Let's say for service sector. Under agricultural credit institution, we have short-term credit institution and the long-term credit institutions. In the long term, we have land development banks in which UPSC has already asked a question in 2013. As far as short term is concerned, so we have state cooperatives, central cooperative banks and primary agricultural credit society on which we have framed a question. This article of the Indian Express was published on the business page and talks about an important agency with the name Insolvency and Bank Corruptcy Board of India. Now as this is a board, it was created under the Insolvency and Bank Corruptcy Code. It is a kind of regulator which provides ease of insolvency and bankruptcy. Now before moving to the question, you should know what is the difference between insolvency and bankruptcy. Insolvency is the inability to pay the due amount which may be a loan or any other borrowing. On the other hand, bankruptcy is the declared insolvency. So if a person is insolvent or unable to pay, he will come under the insolvency. If any agency has declared that person to be insolvent, that person will be called as bankrupt. Now the question has been on the basis of the entities. In 2017, a stressed related asset question was asked by UPSC. Today, we have the four entities, insolvency professionals, professional agencies, professional entities and information utilities. Now, how many of the above are included in the regulatory power? See, it is a regulatory agency, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. Based on the regulatory power of this agency, all of the above are part of the entities which are being regulated by IBBI. Hence, the answer to this question is going to be option 4. See, IBBI is a unique regulator. It regulates profession as well as the process. So when a process, see the process is to move from insolvency to bankruptcy. So this is a process. Being unable to pay and declared unable to pay is a process. It is regulated by IBBI. And on the other hand, it regulates the profession. Profession like the people who are involved in this activities of declaring a person to be bankrupt. So a person who is doing something and what he or she is doing, both are regulated by IBBI. That's all for today's daily prelims practice. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more such updates.